All right, hello and welcome back to Quest for Glory 1. Let's head out and go visit our friend the Dryad. Yeah, let's kill this Saurus quickly, why not? Keep trying to build up some of our magical abilities. I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but um, if you are in the middle of casting a spell and an enemy attacks you, uh, not only does the spell not go off, or at least not land, but you still lose those uh, mana points, which is unfortunate. What do we got? A brigand! Particularly when you're fighting the brigands, and um, want to do as much damage to them as possible, since they tend to be difficult to hit. They're very good at hiding behind their shields. They're not going to deal with the goblins right now. Alright, well, let's head back down, and we can check in on the dryad. <clears throat> Again, you feel a sense of closeness with nature. What a beautiful animal. Step forward. Have you brought the seed I requested? Yes! You drop the seed into the dryad's limbs. Now this will boldly grow where none has grown before. Heed now my words, friend of the forest, and heed them well. Friend, you must know that there is an evil in this valley which perverts the ways of nature. The prophecy says that a hero will bring a young human from out of this darkness. If you are the one to accomplish this task, there is a potion to break enchantments which the healer can make for you. You must gather these ingredients. Flowers from Arana's Peace, green fur, fairy dust, a magic acorn, and flying water. Farewell, friend. I must return to my concentration. May the forest forever surround you. You see an acorn fall slowly to the ground. Pick that up. You pick up the dryad's gift of a magic acorn. All right. While we're over here, we will stop back in on the meeps, have this full conversation, and acquire some of that green fur. Your squeaky muttering, blah, blah, blah. Hiya, hiya, nice to see you again. Meeps, we are happy meeps, living in our happy holes. Don't worry, be happy. We use rocks for doors. They keep us dry and warm in our holes. Tell us about the holes. We like live in tunnels under the ground, you know? All right, and ask about the brigands. Gee, boss, I really don't know much about that at all. Hey, sorry. And fur. Hey, like, fur is good stuff. Keeps us warm. Mine's the best. It's like green, you know? Tell me about green fur. Oh, you want some green fur? I think I have some somewhere. Then he rips it out of his skull. And that's it. I'm just going to go pick up this fur. All right. And why don't we pop back over to the um, healer. Deliver this fur. As well as the acorn and let her know about um, the dryad's uh, recipe for the um, dispel potion. <clears throat> You tell the healer that you have been to visit the Dryad of the Woods and that she gave you a magic acorn and told you the formula for a potion to dispel enchantments. So you help the Dryad. That's nice. She does keep the forest around here healthy. So that's how you make a dispel potion, is it? Thanks for letting me know. You are so welcome. Uh, all right. Well, let's give her some of these ingredients that we have. Thank you. I can always use flowers from around his piece and potion making. Here are your silvers. Give her the acorn. So you help the dryad. That's nice. Yeah, she just repeats that. You can give her the green fur. Those meeps sound so interesting. I'd like to meet them sometime. I'll get to work on that potion of yours. 
Oops. And we can also sell these mushrooms here. These are very nice. I'll dry them and ground them into a powder. All right, how much money do we have? One gold and 120 silver. Okay, so let's make a purchase. We're gonna buy this um, undead ungent. Hope this will help you. Um, and then, do we wanna get anything else right now? No, okay. All right, so let's head down here. And what we're gonna do is go into town and uh, we're just gonna do the conversations on this side of town, uh, which are admittedly less interesting than what we've had before. Smell apples as you approach the corner. What a surprise, we need apples. Good day and welcome to Spielberg. Would you like to buy some of my nice fresh fruits or vegetables? I would actually. But first, her name. I am Hildy, daughter of Heinrich. Uh, Furfurder. Let's see. Furdefedern. Furdefedern. I think that's probably what it is. The farmer. Um, that's about the farmer. My father is a fine farmer. Father. My father is Heinrich. Okay. Farm. We have some land to the north of town. It isn't very big, but we grow many things. You should be here during harvest time. Then you would see many fruits and vegetables. Mother. My mother has been dead for three years now. I still miss her. I'm sorry. Date. Thank you, but my father thinks I am too young. He would not permit it, but perhaps next year. Interesting. I'm not sure what dating a centaur would be like, but she seems nice. Uh, how about the market? This is what... Oh, kind of skipped that. I guess it's not really that interesting. This is where I sell things for my father's farm. Basically the same questions. We ask about vegetables. We have many kinds of fresh vegetables for sale today. There are carrots, rutabagas, parsnips, and potatoes right from the ground for five at a silver. They are very good for you. We also have some apples. Um, and now we're going to ask about all these fruits and veggies for whatever reason. Apples. There are some apples left from last season in the barrel. You may buy ten for a silver since they are so small. Carrots. Carrots are my favorite vegetable. They are so crisp and sweet. Rutabagas keep well over the winter months. Parsnips. Parsnips can be made into a tasty pie. And turnips. Turnips are good if you cook them in stews. All right. Um, and the brigands. They have twice robbed my father of his money, and they have tried to steal our food during this winter. That is because we farm outside of town. The brigands would not dare try that in town. The sheriff would stop them fast. Sheriff, huh? Our sheriff is very brave. He told me so himself. Um, and the robbery, many robbers ran up to father as he trotted back to town. My father tried to fight them, but they hurt him badly. They then ran away to the southwest. All right. Uh, let's purchase some of these apples. Carefully select 10 of the best apples from the barrel and pay Hildy a silver piece. In fact, we're going to buy 50 of them. 20, 30, 40, and 50. All right. Pop in the dry goods store, say hello to this guy. This looks like a dry goods store, but it smells like a musty library. The stove feels nice on such a crisp day. Behind the counter and on the shelves, there are a variety of items for sale. The shopkeeper appears to ignore you while he reads a book. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't notice you coming in. My, you look like an adventurer. We don't see too many around here. The brigands tend to get rid of most adventurers before they make it to town. I do try to stock some things adventurers can use. I actually would rather be an adventurer than a shopkeeper, you see. He looks like an adventurer. My items are pretty ordinary, though. You probably already have most of them if you've done any adventuring at all. Just curious. All right. And one gold, 15 silver. Okay. So let's chat about some things. What is your name, sir? Why, that's me. Uh, I'm Kaspar. Nice to meet you, Kaspar. Adventurer. I always wanted to be an adventurer. I read about the I read about them all the time. The book I was just reading is about adventuring. Tell us about this book. Oh, this book? It's about an adventurer who is trying to become a hero. The title is Quest for Glory, a Hero's Death. Always appreciated that little joke there. Uh, equipment. Unfortunately, I have only standard weapons and equipment. I carry daggers and chain armor. Maybe someday I'll be able to carry magic ones, though. Ooh, fancy. Dagger. Ah, the use of the dagger is uh, use of the dagger is a most skillful art. Actually, this particular weapon is longer than most, but still easily concealable. A bargain at twenty silvers. 
chain armor. Uh, you can get really good protection from my chainmail armor. It's very heavy, though, and I would have to charge you 500 silvers for it. Um, generally, only get that with a fighter class. Food. Adventuring rations aren't the tastiest food in the world, but they will keep you healthy and alert as you go along. A pack of 10 rations will cost you just 5 silvers and a flask. Uh, it's a very good idea to carry an empty flask or two in case you want to pick up a liquid or something else that needs a container. Our flasks are a great bargain at two silvers each. Excellent. Um, all right. How about brigands? I don't like to talk about other people behind their backs. All right. Sheriff, the sheriff and Otto protect this town. The sheriff used to be a real adventurer, you know. And Hildy. Hildy size sells fine produce for a reasonable price. Um, all right. That's enough. We can depart. We'll head down here, and we will pop down into the alleyway, alleyway, um, where we will meet Sam the Beggar. This grubby place must be an alley. It feels strange here, colder than the rest of town. There are some barrels discarded here. A beggar holds out a bowl towards you. If you remember, this is where... Um, uh, Erasmus and Fenris were telling us that the... Protection spell didn't quite reach this alley here. Alms, alms for the poor. We will, in fact, give you alms, Sam. Thanks, you know, it's really tough trying to make a living begging in this town since the brigands started scaring away all the trade. Uh, this used to be such a nice place to live. My advice to you is not to take up begging. It just doesn't pay. And don't go out at night. Um, all right, let's chat a little bit with Sam. He'll tell us a good bit of information. Begging. A beggar gets cash only when others get cash, and nobody's got much money here right now, except maybe the brigands. Cash. There's honest work up at Baron's Castle, I hear, but begging's my business. <laughs> at least he's dedicated. Work. Uh, you can get a job cleaning the stable, I understand. It's great if you want to build up muscles or have a place to spend the night, but you won't get rich. I'd rather beg myself. Um, all right. And what's his name? My name is Sam. I've lived here for five years now, and I think I'll be heading on once the pass clears of snow. There's supposed to be some good begging towns to the south. Nice talking to you. Alms. Alms for the poor. So now if we try and talk to him more. Um, oh, he will talk to us more. Heard Silmaria is a good place to be. We won't get back there until Quest for 5. It's by the sea. I think I'll head there after this. There you go. Um, so let me see. I think I can just, yeah, give him some more cash. And now we can talk to him some more. Spielberg, uh, understand this used to be a great place to be. Traders going in and out, tourists coming and going. Perfect begging conditions. <clears throat> Things were starting to dry up around the time I got here. Just my luck. The brigands started getting tough. Traders. Traders used to stop here on the way south to pick up barrels of some special cider made here by a guy named Amblin. Tourists used to come here regularly for the Spielberg Cider Festival. After the cider industry closed, not much point for the festival without the cider part. Tell us about cider. <clears throat> I heard Amblin got scared of the brigands and decided to move away. I still remember the taste of his cider. It was so good. It was called Amblin Entertainment from Spielberg. Luck. I have lots of luck. It's just that it's all bad. And brigands. Rumor has it someone smart took over, organized them, trained them, that sort of thing. Maybe. Nowadays, no one's safe outside of town. Up to that time, the brigands were just pains, dumb guys who sometimes tried to beat up traders outside of town. They sure hurt business. No one's getting rich but them. Ooh. Time to get back to begging. Give them another coin. Um, all right. That's my luck. That's about the brigands. Yeah, says the same thing. And then we can ask about nighttime. I remember when people used to stroll around town after dark. There's a spell on Spielberg so that it glows at night. Now the only people out late are the thieves. And out of town, man, you don't dare go out there without a light when the sun goes down. The night gaunts will get ya. Tell us about the gaunts. Nobody ever lived to talk uh, what the night gaunts are. Uh, I don't, I sure don't want to find out. Spell. I've heard talk that some kind of magic keeps things peaceful around here. Folks just don't feel like fighting in town. Set maybe Crusher. Kind of wonder about this alley at times, though. Feels funny. Sort of like the spell missed it. It's dark at night, too. 
He works at the tavern. He lives up to his name. Uh, and thieves. I'm not usually bothered by them since I don't have much to steal. They are around, though. It's not safe to sleep in the streets at night. Outside you get eaten. Inside you get robbed. All right. That is all that he has. Except to tell us a word of warning to you. Don't drink the dragon's breath. If you try to drink the dragon's breath, it will kill you. The grimy window lets little light into this tower. It smells like stale ale and other more unpleasant things. The floor is covered with dirt and the bar with sticky beer. Smoke appears to be rising from the center cask behind the bar. To your right, two gamblers are playing cards. The bartender glares at you as you enter, and so does the ugly goon on the left. You get the impression that you're not welcome. Um, so yeah, none of these guys have anything overly special to offer. We'll talk to the baker for a minute about the bakery. Haven't been able to get any supplies in since the brigands closed off the area. The bakery will be open as soon as I have some. And these guys are playing a ridiculous game of Go Fish. Cards. The butcher has been getting all the good cards. Name. I'm Silas Sourdough, the baker. And fish. Mirror Lake to the south has a huge fish, but it's pretty dangerous. Awesome. The butcher. Butcher shop. Uh, there's not a whole lot of meat in town for me to butcher these days. Now, if someone would just bring down that stag in the forest... Hmm. I don't think we're going to do that. Cards. <clears throat> cards have been very, very good to me. Name, I'm Butch Beefmeister, the butcher, and the fish. So, river to the south by the Flying Falls, which is some good-sized trout. Wonderful. All right, let's pick up this piece of paper. Smooth out the piece of paper, and it reads, B, he's starting to get suspicious. Hold off on our meetings for a bit, but I'll keep you posted by these notes. B. Very, very sneaky sounding. All right, let's sit at the bar, talk to the bartender quickly. He's not a big fan of ours. What do you want? Name. This is a bar. I serve drinks. You want a drink? Order one. You want answers to stupid questions? Get out. Drinks. Ale. One silver. Troll's bet. Five silvers. Dragon's bet. Twenty-five silver. Take your pick. <clears throat> if we drink the troll's sweat, um, I think it just knocks us unconscious and then they rob us. The dragon's breath, like I said, kills us. Ale. Good for whatever ails you. Har har. Troll's sweat. It'll go down real smooth. Dragon's Breath, it's the house specialty. Um, Alright, name, drinks, town. What do you think I am, a guide dog or something? Tavern. This is the Aces and Eights Tavern, stranger. Aces and Eights. Crusher, he don't like his personal affairs discussed. My advice is not to do anything that'll get him upset. Fair enough. Alright, we'll buy an ale, because why not? One well-aged house brew, coming up. <clears throat> There you go. This tastes as sour as it smells and burns your throat as you swallow it. Still, it's not the worst beer I've ever drunk. All right, let's pop up. We will head out. It's about all we need to do in here until later. I think what we will do is go and visit Browgy now that we have the apples. Hey, buddy. You want these? Fruit you have found to fill all my food stores. Thus filled the bargain, my gem you have bought. Browgy has bartered, and all has been answered. The mead it may mellow, and now I head home. Browgy strides off through the cave on its way back to his northern home. All right. So we have our gem. Um, and we could go and visit Bob Yaga. Hmm. Hostile intent. All right, let's see how we do. We had enough to get off one shot. Let's see how fighting this brigand goes. Gotta wait for our moment. See if we can bait an attack. There we go. Yeah. All right, that went well. Six silver coins. Very nice. All right. Here's what I think we will do. We're going to head over to Bobby Gala's place. Um, what time is it? Mid-morning on day five. 
All right, yeah, we're going to head over to Baba Yaga's place. We're not actually going to go inside yet, though. What I'm going to do is end the video here, um, and then eh, we can kill this goblin. Why not? And then in between videos, I'm going to do a little bit more training, build up some of our stat points and magical abilities, um, and when we come back, we will actually go in and visit kindly miss Baba Yaga and learn, um, well, actually I guess we're not really going to learn much of anything, but we will go visit her next time. However, until then, see ya!